Hi, this is one of the first parts of our 28 day guide to keto living day by day. Um, whether you are just getting started with trying to follow a ketogenic diet or whether you've tried before and stopped because it was too difficult or for whatever reason, this is a way to guide you through the first 28 days or the first four weeks, which can be the most challenging. So in my book, Keto Living Day by Day, and you don't have to buy the book to get this, but in my book, I talk about knowing your why. And I actually talk, I have a couple pages dedicated to this, but I talk about knowing your why. And knowing your why is, why is this important to you? Why do you wanna follow a ketogenic way of eating? You know, when I started keto, I didn't have these forms, and these forms are available. If you don't have the book, they're free on my website, and I'll put the link. If you look at the video description, there's a down arrow, and I'll put the link to the free PDFs. You can print them out just like I did. I printed these from my webpage, and you can fill them out yourself. But I want to talk about why I did this, why I did know your why. So when I started ketogenic diet in June of 2013, I was at a pretty desperate place in my life. I had tried everything to lose weight, everything. And um, I struggled. And in fact, I was determined I was gonna do this. I had a nice home, two amazing children, a fantastic loving husband, and I was morbidly obese and had been for most of my life since I was three years old. It was the one thing I couldn't do. I had, like I said, I had a PhD. Um, I had a career where I was respected and I did consulting. And so all these things I had always accomplished or been able to do, controlling my weight wasn't one of them. I spent most of my life wondering what was wrong with me. And so I decided that through sheer grit and determination, I was going to do this or die trying. It was going to be kind of a bucket list, of, a bucket list thing to do to lose weight. And so I actually sat down. There were a couple of things that triggered why this was so important to me. But I sat down and I jotted down why. Why I wanted to lose weight. Like I said, I didn't have these forms that you were going to have. But I thought about why this mattered to me. And I had been at a wedding with my husband and I was wearing this pink polyester suit. And there were all these women there wearing these gorgeous sleeveless fitted dresses and they looked amazing. And there I was not feeling very feminine at all in my size 24 pink polyester suit. I was hot um, and it wasn't appropriate, but it was one thing that I really had in my closet that I could wear that was remotely appropriate for this summer wedding. And I remember feeling bad for my husband that day. And I remember wondering if he was embarrassed. Now, David never said anything to make me think he was embarrassed of my weight. But I decided that he deserved better. Um, I also wrote down, I, I, when I wrote in my notes, I wrote, remember the wedding, remember the dresses that you couldn't wear. Remember how you felt frumpy. Remember how you thought that your husband deserved more. But I also thought about my children because what was happening with the kids, they were younger and they wanted mom to do things with me, with them. <laughs> they wanted mom to do things with them. I couldn't chase them at the park. Um, in fact, I worried sometimes if I was at the park by myself and Jonathan especially started to run toward the road, I could not have caught him if he had gotten out in traffic. He was far faster than I. Um, so I worried about that from a safety standpoint and it would keep me from doing things with him if I felt like I couldn't keep up with him. Um, the kids wanted to ride bikes, they wanted to go on hikes, they wanted to do things and physically I wasn't able to do that because of the obesity and because of the back pain that I had. Um, so. I wasn't the mom I wanted to be. I wasn't the wife I wanted to be. I um, kind of shied away from social situations. I was so self-conscious because not only did I not have the clothes to wear, but um, I also just, I felt so awkward and overweight. And when I was in social situations, um, I was, I sweat quite a bit. Um, I get out of breath and I'd often kind of sit in the corner and not participate because I felt so bad about who I was. So I put this together for you to know your why. And let me tell you what I put and why you should take the time to do this. Um, one of the first things I read was, does your health negatively impact your day-to-day -day life? If so, how? Notice I didn't say, does your weight? I said, does your health negatively impact your day-to-day -day life? It, it impacted me because it kept me from doing things. The back pain, morbid obesity, the clothing, 
it also impacted me because I was always hypoglycemic. I, my blood sugar stayed like a roller coaster. And so I had to eat every few hours. So I didn't go anywhere without food in my purse. And I actually wrote, and this is a sample, you'll see it if you have the book, you can see the sample actually on my website too. You'll see the sample where I wrote, and this is what I wrote retrospectively when I was writing the book. At work, I use a desk that raises up because sitting for a long time hurts my back. I can't easily go upstairs and I can't walk very far. I need help putting on pantyhose for work or church, which is difficult when I travel alone to professional conferences. I remember not wanting to travel. I was going to present at a conference and I worried how would I put on pantyhose with my suits. I eventually stopped wearing hosiery because it was difficult to put it on alone. David had to help me. I can't participate in any physical activities with my children. After work, my back hurts so much that I just go to bed. It's often difficult to find clothing that fits, especially professional attire. That's how it impacted my life. I may have been eating donuts and bread and pasta and potatoes, but there are all those negative things came with that. The second question I wrote was, how does your health affect your relationship with others? Do you feel that your close friends and family are impacted by your health? And they were. And so I wrote, my health affects my children because I cannot do things with at night, my back hurts too much to walk upstairs to tuck them in. I don't take them to activities. I avoid social situations because I don't feel well or I don't want to embarrass my husband. Sometimes I avoid seeing friends because of my weight. A lot of our family time is limited to the things that I can do. <clears throat> the third question I put was, why is it important for you? Why is it important to you to follow a ketogenic lifestyle? What do you hope to accomplish? And I wrote, I want to lose weight. I want to be able to do things with my children. I want to wear pretty clothes like other women do. I want my husband to be proud of me. Now, let me be clear. David never told me he wasn't proud of me, but I wanted to feel that feminine way that we feel when we are a healthy weight. I want to feel normal instead of always feeling like the fat girl. I want to be able to shop in any clothing store, not just in plus size stores. I want to be able to walk in the mall and go on hikes with my family without pain. I want to be able to fit into movie theater seats and airplane seats without being embarrassed. I don't want to have to worry about whether I will fit in a booth at a restaurant. Those are the reasons why I wanted to do this. The last question, what do you want to be different about your health or your eating habits? And I wrote simply, I want to be in control of my food and I want to not be hungry. I want to feel good instead of having daily pain and inflammation. So why would you take the time to do this? I mean, how helpful is this going to be in the long run? I'll tell you that even though I didn't have this form, I told you earlier, I did write down just on a little piece of paper. And in fact, I ended up putting it on my phone app and my reminder page, my notes page. I put it in there. And so every time that I was faced with some a, diff, a challenge or the difficulty in staying on plan, I went back to that. So when I was tempted with food or when I was stressed or when I wanted some kind of dessert, I go back to that and I know my why. I think about why does this matter? Why is this important? So I can eat this chocolate cake, this high carb thing. I can, I can, I can eat potatoes or pasta or rice or I can have the yeast rolls or I can choose me. I can choose this healthier lifestyle where I can wear pretty dresses. So when it comes down to choosing nice dress, heels, <laughs> cute shoes, or choosing high carb foods, it's really easy for me. I can't tell you how many times I went back to my phone app and I remembered my why. And I'd say, just for today, I can do this. Just for today, I'm gonna stay on plan. Just for today, I'm gonna see if this works. I owe it to my family. I owe it to my husband, to my children, I owe it to me to see if I can get through this, if I can get through this one day. So I would encourage you to take the time, go and do it in the book, go to my webpage, pull down the form, know your why, take the time to fill it out. This is going to be a tool for you to go back to every time you feel challenged to stay on plan. Again, if you do a little drop down box, sometimes it's a down arrow, sometimes it says video description, I'll put the link to my website where you can get this form for free, even if you don't have the book. I hope that knowing your why helps you to stay on plan.